I find we often worry about how much money we will have, you know, when it goes when it comes to following God's purpose for our lives or just following the dreams that we have in general. We always get that reality check that like, you know, you're in reality, inflation is real, housing is going up, like you're going to need to pay bills. So maybe that is your dream, sure. Maybe that's God's will for your life, sure, but can it pay the bills? Um or we, you know, some of us are in high school or elementary school or even college and we see people our age wearing designer stuff, having the newest iPhone, having the newest AirPods, having MacBooks, having iPads with the pens and it's a pink iPad and everything like that. Like we see all these things and they get so hyped up and every single month a new materialistic thing gets hyped up and it's just another way for us to feel left out. It's another way for us to, you know, envy or crave what somebody else has. And we think that this wealth or these material things is the end all and be all of our lives but i was reading psalms 50 today um and it said i I highlighted this one part and it said the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to me um and that's that was what god was saying and i thought that was just so amazing so i searched it up and i'm like what is the significance of god saying the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to me and basically the cattle was like I don't know animals like cows like I don't know the the cattle was like I don't know good I don't know what it was honestly but I searched up the definition of what that's the significance of that saying and it's that um, a cattle was primarily used um, as a measure for a symbol of wealth in biblical times so if you had a cattle that was on hills it was a way to show that you were wealthy during biblical times um so to me this saying means um god is speaking and he's telling people that he's the creator and he created everything and even the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him like he makes no mistake right and i also remember this one bible verse um and it says um if your fathers on heaven in sorry if your fathers on earth know how to give good gifts how much more can your father in heaven give to you something like that and Every time I feel like, you know, God, can you please give me like we always ask God for very little things and we we beg as if he can't give it to us in this moment. We beg as if he like as if he's stingy and he holds his hand from giving us good things. But the Bible says, like, if your parents here on this earth can give you good gifts, why what makes you think I can't give you even better gifts and I'm your father in heaven? So when God says a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to me, he's saying literally everything on hev- in heaven and on earth belong to me. Like there isn't one thing that does not belong to me. So why do we worry about our next paycheck? Why do we worry about how we're going to pay our bills? Why do we worry about if we're going to get this promotion or not? Like why do we worry about these things when the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to God? Why do we worry about these things when God says just the faith of a mustard seed can literally move mountains? Why are we so why are we so worried? Like honestly, whenever I read the Bible, I kind of feel like dumb. Like I think like like come on, like this is so wise. Like why why haven't I thought about this before? Why haven't I thought this before? And I think the main takeaway from this word is that God keeps his promises. Like there isn't one thing that God can't do for you. There's nothing too big. There's nothing too small that God can't get done for you, right? But I think the problem arises when we see God like he's a genie in a bottle. Like whenever we want something, we can get it. Like faith plus faith without works is dead, right? So we need to have faith, but we also need to be able to do what is necessary and to do what is in our control in order to receive those blessings from God. And we also have to be wise enough and remember that before a big breakthrough happens, before God gives you a big blessing, there will be trial, there will be tribulation, there will be an obstacle, right? And that can either be temptation, which is from the devil, or that can be a test, which is from God, which is God giving the devil authority to test you, basically. Um, or just God in general testing you. Because God, remember, if God gives, God has to give the devil 
permission to test you right he'll never let the devil kill you he'll never let the devil destroy you or hurt you or you know steal from you but he needs to give the devil authority to test you right and god is good there's not a drop of evil in him so if there's something really bad that's going to happen like he can't be the one that does it because he's not evil right and the devil's constantly trying to get at us but remember the story of job where the devil had to ask permission to test job the devil couldn't just test job because when you're chosen by god when you're covered by the blood of jesus when you're covered in god's protection like the devil yes he'll be trying everything in his power to get to you but he can't just get to you that way you know he needs to ask god permission right and we also know that the bible says that um there's no there's nothing new underneath the sun you know every temptation has been known to mankind and god is merciful and he will um with every temptation he will find a way to help you escape it so that you can bear it right i know i'm butchering that but you know what i'm saying so all of this goes hand in hand in hand in hand um we also see the story of the man who was demon possessed and jesus casted out his demons and the demons were literally crying out to god saying can we please go into somebody and god said no and then the demon said can we go into these herds of pigs and jesus said fine and they drove them into the herds of pigs and they fell off a cliff so we know that the devil needs to ask authority before he can even come near us or get in our vicinity because we constantly have angels fighting battles for us so there really isn't anything to worry about god keeps his promises and he makes no mistakes make no mistake about it god can never be mocked god's word can never return to him void if god says it it will be done right god is was and will always be in control so you just have to wait like god honestly blessed me today with something that i have been waiting like a couple months for and i honestly didn't know if i would win i honestly didn't know if i would get there but i waited and joy most definitely comes in the morning and he just blessed me and even though like the rest of the day might have like been rough or whatever like nothing can take away the joy that came to me in the morning like that just set the tone you know for my whole entire day so just remember like if you if if there's there's nothing new underneath the sun there's nothing that god can do for you but he always needs to check your heart he always needs to check your intentions you know you can't just god can't just give you something there has to be a reason there has to be a way he's trying to level you up and that might that might include a waiting season that might include a season of isolation that may include a season of betrayal or low sales or no job or no family around or a broken down car like and in the moment in the midst of it all like i honestly I, honestly when i think back at it i'm like oh my gosh like why was i even like so worried about this like it all turned out great but it's so easy for us to say that when we're enjoying our times but in the midst of it like it's very scary not knowing what's going next but god is merciful and we need to be as faithful as he is and trusting in his plan so whenever you feel like you're lacking whenever you feel like you don't know where god is you don't know if god is near you don't know if god will pull through remember that he makes no mistakes and that he's a promise keeper and he will always be in control of everything and that the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him